Should countries take back their former suspected ISIS members? I am asking the British people to forgive me. And what about the children born under ISIS? I as well am a victim of ISIS, you know. Mima Begum and Hoda Mafana are pretty famous for joining ISIS. Because I made a mistake. But what should happen to them and the thousands of other women and children living in prison camps in northeast Syria? She seems to me to be a very cynical young woman who actually knew exactly what she was doing. I think it's fair to say it's a pretty polarised debate. So this war criminal expects us to believe her narcissistic narrative. Before we get into that, some background. Late last year, I went over to North East Syria and visited these camps. I met with Shmima Begum and Hoda Mathana. They're two very famous women living amongst thousands of others, including children, living in pretty hellish conditions. They don't have real access to healthcare, and whilst living there, the kids don't really stand any chance at a normal life. In the spirit of honesty, I'm going to try and be real with you. Since coming back, it's pretty hard not to think about the kids that are living there and some of the women, to be honest. Some of you will probably shut this video off right now. I'm not falling for it. But bear with me because it is more complicated and interesting than you think. So in the UK, we only bring back orphan children. But when I was over there, it's clear that the Kurds want the foreigners out of the camp. And two, other European countries are bringing their women and children back. So um, my name is Jursi Tanner. So he negotiated the release of some Finnish women and children from the camps. Obvious question first, why would they even want to do that? Basically, to put it very crudely, everybody wanted to help the children, but nobody really uh, had any appetite for bringing adult mothers, let alone uh, men uh, back. Okay, so legally they couldn't split up the mother from the child, so they had to bring both back. But surely this is a risk in itself. I've come to believe that it's actually a, um, a greater security risk to leave the children and their mothers there in the camps then to bring them back quickly. Yeah, it still doesn't really make sense. So like, why would they still do that? I, I'll explain. Everything indicates that they will return to Finland sooner or later anyway. Really, our choice was to to repatriate them quickly or wait passively, maybe five, 10, perhaps 15 years until until they return anyway. And which one of those options might be, you know, less risky from the national security standpoint. I mean, it has been my judgment that it's less risky to, to, to bring them back quickly, get the kids to school, uh, investigate the mothers for pot potential crimes. People in Finland were kind of angry when the government decided to do this. But once they've made a decision, told them why, the anger did kind of die down. Overall, by and large, I think that the Finnish society has accepted uh, that this is the least of, of, uh, of, of evils, least of uh, of, of bad options that we have. Okay, makes sense. So the UK only brings back orphan children. So why is our policy so different to Finland? Uh, my name is Jonathan Hall. I am the independent reviewer of terrorism legislation. So this guy's got access to a lot of top secret information. He knows more than most of us are even aware of. This is a political decision, and I'm not dodging the question here. I, I don't, I don't, I don't advise the government what to do, but I do think the public needs to have and politicians, greater understanding about what the risks are of repatriating and the risks are of not repatriating. So Jonathan makes the point that there are definitely dangerous people in Syria. It's not like everyone wants to come home and is suddenly fine, but... If you take children at the other end of the spectrum, there's not only a moral argument about children who were taken out against their, their will, but children who are growing up in, in the camps. Um, and in addition, children who are beginning to reach later teenage years are being transferred from the camps to prisons where they are spending time with mainstream adults who will have gone out there to fight. So if that group of children is going to return, eventually, then there's a risk about them staying there a moment longer. Every moment they spend longer is a risk of them becoming more desensitised, more trained, more determined to fight and brainwashed to fight for Islamic State. OK, we're kind of getting to a middle ground here. It's not a kind of conversation where you can be like, leave them all over there, we don't want anything to do with them, or bring them all back, they're all fine. Because you can't compare children who are potentially being influenced by ISIS with grown men who might have committed the most violent crimes. So let's talk about someone who might have been influenced when they were younger, Shmima Begum. She was 15 when she left London to travel to Syria. Still a child. What does he think about her? I, th I think that it's inevitable that people will look at a really tricky issue in human terms. And she has become the human face of this issue. Um, from her perspective, I suspect it's, un it's unfortunate. So should she be on our back? Remember this man has access to a lot of secret information. Personally, I do understand that she was very young when she went out um, and I do see that there are lots of risks in the UK which we're capable of managing 
Um, and I do question personally whether she is so exceptional compared to all those other risks. Interesting. Okay, so playing devil's advocate, some media have been pretty vocal on this issue. You know, she made her decision, leave her there, that kind of thing. First of all is internationally. Um, if, if our allies uh, are bringing people back, ultimately it could damage the UK's reputation. If, if it looks like we can't handle the risk. Um, I mean, secondly, secondly, secondly there, is, there, is, there is the moral argument and the fact that she was, she was very young. Uh, and thirdly, with people like Shamim Begum, although she doesn't have any children, children who were taken out, I don't think on any basis went out as, as volunteers. Some of them, and this is a difficult thing, will have become more dangerous in the camp, but they are innocent, and I don't think that issue is gonna go away. So I do think that there will be an increase at some stage, I don't know when, of the number of women and children who've been returned. And I do think that the, 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 the moral case for children is, is never gonna go away. Okay, I'm gonna try and round this all up. So, UK may start bringing suspected ISIS members back if it cares what its neighbours thinks, but also a key thing that matters is what its people think. Sure, Jennifer makes the point of what the potential risks are of bringing these people back. If a chunk of the general public and media outlets are so against bringing one person back, she mean Begum, bringing back more doesn't really seem that likely. So something drastic might have to happen, like another earthquake or ISIS to try and break them out of the camp for the government to even and think about bringing them back. But until that happens, not much will probably change. Hi, thank you for making it to the end of this video. Hopefully you can tell that I'm pretty interested in the camps and what happens to them and the women and children inside of them. If you found it helpful or useful, make sure you go and subscribe to our channel and you can watch our longer interview with Hodama Thana. She was 20 when she left America to go and join ISIS and an inside longer look at the ISIS camps. Sorry, also thank you to Jonathan Hall and Yussi Tanner for taking the time to talk to us. I think it's a really important conversation.